Hey folks, AJ the CEO here, and in this video, I wanna walk you through how to get sound from a digital mixer, which just happens to be an X32, and get and send all the audio of everybody who's using mics inside of the sanctuary to Zoom and have it set up so that if somebody is talking on Zoom, you can also hear them inside of the sanctuary. All right, so I've done this on a couple, for a couple of other ministries, and this is actually what I just did last weekend, and I wanna document this so they can see it because it's really straightforward, but if you miss one of the configurations, you're gonna have an issue with what you got going on. So right now I have an X32 right now, and let me actually turn this over so you can actually see what I got going on here. So I've got myself an X32, and this is a rack mount. This is actually a system that is being repaired for a, that got repaired for a church. Um, I have a mini PC right here. Um, this is a, um, a B-Link Ryzen 5 mini PC. I'm actually donating this to the ministry that I'm working on um, because their system is way too slow. Um, so I'm using this for an example. So the first thing, and I have a diagram that's gonna show all of this that I'm gonna explain. The first thing that we have is I have the audio out that's connected right here through a 3.5 millimeter cable. That is coming out and going into the mixer right here. So I'm pulling audio directly from here. That means anything I play on the computer, whether it be YouTube, whether it be music, whether it be Zoom, that is gonna output the audio from that over this cable directly into the system. That is important. Now I also have the mixer connected over a USB cable so that I'm pulling all of the audio that hits the mixer out over USB. Now I could have done this if this was a bigger computer that has um, like for example, let me show you here. If we had like a regular motherboard kind of like this or a computer, we could have used the audio out, this green jack, and then also brought audio in over the blue. But again, this is a mini PC that does not have this. So if you have a big computer, that would be the preferable setting for that. But this, I don't have for that. That's why I'm doing it this way. Um, so we're bringing in all the audio over USB into the system, right? Now, the other thing that you want to avoid, especially with, um, with doing this with Zoom, because we're sending everything from the mixer, which includes the computer, we don't want to loop it back on itself. So we're going to make a custom mix so that the computer does not, is not included on the audio that's coming right back. And this is mainly for Zoom because everybody is already hearing what's happening in Zoom. The Zoom program is ha ha happening that. So in other words, say um, Sister Susie is talking and it hits Zoom. We want her to be heard in the system, in the sanctuary. That's why this is coming out. But when we pull audio back from here, we don't need to send Sister Susie back to everybody in Zoom because everybody's already gonna hear Sister Susie in Zoom. All right, I hope you understand that. So that's why we're, they call it a mix minus, meaning our mix is minus, does not include the computer because we don't need it to do that. All right, hopefully you understand that. So let me switch this back and let's go to the actual computer itself. And let me show you the setup for the system. Now, here inside of the controls, you see I have a live stream mix. This is for the live stream. They're not live streaming right now. But I have another mix, which is nothing but the Zoom. So if you see, if I go to the main, you see I'm bringing in the computer audio. That is coming in on the mix, on the main mix. If I go to the live stream, you see I could bring the live stream audio. I can turn up the PC. So that would be included in the live stream. The phone, if I had my phone connected to it, that would be included in the live stream as well too. Now, the mix I made for Zoom, I do not want to include the PC for that same reason. I don't want to loop the audio back on itself. So we'll play around with this so you can see. Now, 
that's the main setup. I have a mix just for that. Now, if I go to routing, and this is particular to the X32 for this to work. First, we need to go to our outs, and you see I have my main out, which is seven and eight. Typically on the X32, the last out are, the last outs are your main mix. So that's seven and eight on this, since it has um, eight outs on the bigger board, that would be um, 15 and 16. Now we have our live stream mix is outs one and two, zoom three and four. So I've routed them to the physical out. So if I had a physical connection here um, connected, I could run that out and plug it into the other computer, like I was talking about, if we had an input jack on the computer. All right, that's the first thing. Now let's go to our user out settings. And we had to make sure that our, um, actually let me go back, because we need to make sure to do this with the X32, we need to be on a firmware 4.0 and higher. We're on 4.08, so we're good. Just make sure you're doing that if this is on the X32. So let me go back right here. If, like I said, if you actually have this done and you have a way of connecting that, all you would really need to do is get a cable like this, which is my um, typical dual XLR to 3.5. So like I said, if you had, if you were doing this with a computer, all you would have to do is connect this to the line in right there. And because of how we, this is set up on the board right now, all I would have to do is actually physically connect this to the outs on the back of this board for outputs three and four, and then this will work the exact same way if you didn't want to use USB. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is come down here to user out, and we want to map the outs of the board to the physical outs. It sounds redundant, but hopefully this will make sense here. So we're gonna say the source for our outs is going to be three and four. That's where we're sending mixes three and four, which is the custom mix for the Zoom that does not include the PC audio, that is routed to our outs, all right? And then the next thing we're gonna do is go to the card, and for the card, because the card is gonna see outputs one through eight over USB, that's what that is, we want to set that to specifically say, we want to get our settings to map and match whatever is the outputs, the physical outputs of one through eight, which is what we just did here. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So right now I have the computer set up. I mean, I have my mixer set up so that it goes to um, my speaker right here. So if I hook up my phone, And I'm going to play some music that I own, that I wrote, so that way I don't get hit for anything. And I want to show how this will work. So let me find something that I can loop real quick. All right, so I am playing some music right now. over the phone, as you can see. Now that is not included, actually that is included on the Zoom, so that's how you're seeing that activity. You're not hearing it because I have it down here. So if I turn it up, now you're hearing it, you're hearing it through the house. So what does that simulate? That means that if I was playing this right now, playing audio, Everybody on the Zoom could hear it, but the sanctuary could not. We can do that in reverse as well, too. Say we're playing music that you're not licensed to stream. You can play that inside the sanctuary. I could turn this volume up, but then on the Zoom or the live stream, if I turn it down, they won't get that audio. That's the exact same thing we just did with Zoom, all right? So we want to be able to hear when people talk inside the sanctuary. So if I go back here, that is going to be from the PC. 
When we start talking on the PC, we'll be able to hear it here, but we do not need that volume looped back in our Zoom. All right, so with that being said, let me turn the music off and let's go into Zoom now. Oh, also, I didn't mention this. Um, to get all of this to work, you also need to make sure, especially if you're using the X32 or any board that actually has a digital out, you need to probably download the software so that your computer can actually see the board. So that is what this program is. Um, I got from Behringer's website. So now this runs in the background and now my computer can see the X32 as an interface. Now remember when we talked about the one and two, how we have the outs. When you have that software installed, the computer is actually gonna see multiple inputs, one through eight and one through eight for outputs. So when we do this, we're using the physical out. We want the physical speaker out on the computer to be our output. So in our settings, we have speaker set for that for our out. For our input, you see we have um, three, four, one, two. We got a bunch of other settings right here, but we're using one and two. So we need to change that to one and two right here because that mimics what we just did in our routing right here for one and two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is the same thing that is right here, one through eight, one, two, three, but we're using one and two. So we need to make sure, see the outs right there, one and two, that's what we're using. So that's what we set the out one and two from the mixer is coming into one and two on the computer. That's what that setting is. And I know it gets confusing. That's why I wanna walk through all of that. So now we got that set up. We're gonna come over here into Zoom, which I already have set up and we want to make sure our audio is right. So remember, if we test our speakers, because we have it routed, and we have our PC audio turned up, let me go ahead and close this so we can get back to our audio settings. So if we go back to our main, we want to be able to hear the PC. So if we've done this right, when we test our speaker, we should hear the speaker test inside the sanctuary. All right, so we got that working. So when anybody was talking on Zoom, we'll be able to hear them because of the setting. We are sending our audio out over speaker. <clears throat> now, if we did everything right, when we test our mic and we're using input number one, we should be able to get audio. So let me test this. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Test, test. All right, it's very low. Let me turn that up again. Let's do it again. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. All right, so our settings are right. So in theory, we should be good. So let's verify this whole thing. Now that I have this Zoom set up, let's go ahead and I'm gonna join in on this Zoom on my phone. Now be very mindful of this because this is gonna cause an echo just because of how close I am. So I'm gonna walk somewhere else so to, um, to make sure I don't make sure I don't have make sure I don't have a crazy echo. So that's what you just heard. So let me turn this down. So let me move over here. So if I'm talking, let me turn the volume down. Somebody can hear. So let me get a little bit farther away. And see, the mic is so sensitive, it's actually picking up everything. So if somebody was talking, so if somebody was talking, that's how you would hear, which is crazy. So we have to be careful about that. And again, I'm in such a tight quarters, I really don't have that much space to really get really far away from this. 
But if I unmute this, and if I start talking, if I start talking, if I start talking, you should be able to hear. Test that. Test that. One, two. Hopefully you can hear that. Hopefully you can hear that. <laughs> this is weird to be able to replicate all this. So that's how me talking in here, everybody can hear. Let me put this over here so y'all can actually, um, no, because I have the mic on me. <laughs> so that's how y'all are able to hear it. But anyway, that's how you can hear everything going through. So if somebody was talking, you'd be able to hear them fine. Now, you just have to be aware that if, say, you want to bring somebody in to um, hear them in the sanctuary, what I would have to do is unmute them or ask them to unmute. And you don't, that's how you can control that. So you got to be very careful of that. So let me mute this mic. And then let me unmute this. Test it. Testing one, two, one, two. Let me move it farther. On. I am way too close. All right, so I've turned the volume down, so hopefully it won't pick up from the mic. But you hear it's not that bad of an echo. Again, if somebody's at home and they're not in the same room, you're fine. So this is one of the other issues that happened with when people had this set up. And you see how sensitive this it is. It's picking this up from this far away. So let me mute this again. Now, the issue that I was having with another ministry is if you're doing this, you have to be very, very careful that now the mixer is taking is acting as a humongous microphone that's picking up everybody inside of the church. You should not have anybody else inside the sanctuary with Zoom on and with their mic turned on or with their speaker turned on, because as you can see, it is picking up like crazy everything else in here. So when you have this set up, let your sound system and the dedicated computer that's running Zoom, let that handle all of your audio for anybody that's in Zoom in the sanctuary. Everybody else who's not on site, is say you want to be on Zoom and you're in the fellowship hall, yeah, you're good. But if you're inside the sanctuary near mics, near all that stuff, and it's picking it up, it's going to echo because you can't control that. This is the type of setup, just like with your live stream, let the media handle it, and it should be good. So I hope that answers all of your questions. Let me know if you have any more, if you have any other issues. Let them down below. And again, I want to thank Otis for that because he's the one that pointed out I need to do a mix minus and not include the PC audio. And that would that would have made the actual mix even worse. Just realize when you do do that, if you're playing audio from that same computer, you have to be real careful what you're doing because we're muting that audio. The best way that I see is to actually have your audio source something different. So like an iPad or phone or something, if you want to play music, um, it's just a little difficult when you're going to try and play, play music on the computer that you might want to mute on occasion, but then also capture audio from Zoom. You're making your job a little bit more difficult. It is doable, but just realize there's a lot of things you got to jump and set and mute and do if you are doing multiple audio outputs from that computer as well. Personally, like I said, have the computer set up to play audio just for everybody in the Zoom for everybody to hear, but I won't play anything like music from that same computer. I'll use like some other device, another computer or phone plugged in to play music. So let me know down below if you have any other questions and I hope that helps you. If you like this type of content, appreciate a like, consider subscribing, hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. Thanks for watching folks. This is AJ. Catch you on the next video later. Mm -hmm.